Hello everyone. I am finally making my tennis ball video for the neck, shoulders, and back. I apologize that it has taken me so long to get my act together. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to show you a picture in my trail guide book so you have an idea of the area that we're working, the different kind of layers of the muscles, and so on and so forth. So here's the trail guide book. I'm just going to show you the one picture today. So we're going to work the occiput, which is this area right here. We're going to come start there and work some uh, circles in that area. Then we're going to come down into these tight upper trap areas on both sides. I'm going to actually guide you through just the one side and then you can go back and do your other side in your own time just to save us time on watching the video so it's not an hour long. Okay, so upper traps we're working down into this area here. And then we're going to just follow the inner edge of that scapula, that medial side, and come around this way. Okay, and then we're going to come down the back and get into this QL and this tendony area down here, which is problematic for a lot of people. Okay, so coming up through here, making our way down and down the spine from there. And then we'll just end with that, and you can play with that idea. And you can certainly send me feedback if you would like. So, we're gonna start with just a tennis ball. You can throw a tennis ball in a long sock if you want for easier grabability, if that is even a word. Um, I have it in a bag here so I can reach it and that's easier for me. So let's start on our backs and we're gonna place the ball in the back of the skull. Right in that divot, right here, okay? I'm going to lie down and I'll just do my left side so we can get through this a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm placing it right there in the back of my skull. And we're going to tilt this down a smidge. There we go. So what I like to do is I like to just interlace my fingers around the ball and just cup it. And that way it's off the ground a little bit and it's kind of sitting in the scoop of my hands and I can get some great pressure that way. Okay, so we're just going to settle into this spot. should feel pretty tight for you. And we're making some tiny movements, some tiny guesses. Just a little bit. And so the idea here is to stay consistent with pressure and try not to bounce off the muscle as we're going down the back. Okay, so then make some tiny nose and some circles. So yeses, nose, and circles in both directions and just gauge what feels better in this spot for you. Okay. You can look up lifting the chin to get in there a little bit deeper with pressure and you can tuck the chin to kind of ride along the fibers of the tissue there a little ways feels nice no matter what you do back there it feels pretty good so let's go to my left we're going to go to that upper trap attachment point so right to the side of that little dent where we were just were you'll feel a bump there that's tight and tendinous and I just shifted my hands over to that spot you can also do one-handed where my arm is at a diagonal my elbows up see and I'm just holding the ball and you sit right on top of that tendony knot and you hold it, you cup the ball, you push up into the skull, you look up a little bit and you make some tiny yeses and some tiny no's. So we're kind of pressing up and underneath the bone of our skull. We're going to try to stay right on that tendon and keep the pressure consistent. Okay. So we work that area a little bit and pause whenever you need to if you want to hang out here for a little bit. I'm going to move on. So I'm going to the outside of that tendon and I'm going to get to the left side of that and push in and up and kind of push up against the outside of that spot. And then we're making some tiny S's and tiny nose. And just holding pressure right in that spot waiting for a little bit of release there. Feels really, really good. Okay, 
Okay, so as we're working the area, we take our time with it. I'm going to move on. So I'm simply scooting that ball to about here. Okay, holding it with the opposite hand like this, and I'm laying down over the top of it. Cup the ball, press in and up into the skull, and make your movement. So you can turn your head to the left, since we're doing left side, and apply more pressure with the weight of your head, and do some tiny yeses and tiny noes. And just work that tight tendon out to help relax the neck. This is great for alleviating headaches and neck tension and you know just stress that sits in these spots we just carry with us all day long. Feel free to grab onto the ball and kind of move the ball back and forth. Just kind of feel in your body what you want to do with this tool. You know, just kind of take it to where you want to go with it. We're going to go a little bit more left, so we're coming around. I'm going to turn my head, so I'm, I'm right behind my ear, right here, and we're going to press in and up. So you will feel something sore right there. I'm right behind my earlobe, right about there, and I'm looking left to get downward pressure. You'll find that tendon right there. That's your SCM. That tendon comes down and attaches to the clavicular joint on the inside of your collarbone that attaches to your sternum. So this is a tight muscle, you can almost grab it. Mine is very pronounced, it pops out at me. So you can grab onto it, and while you're holding pressure at the tendon with the ball, you can pinch it and turn your head to the right. Just a little bit, and then come back to center. And it's almost like you're grabbing it and you're pulling backwards towards your ear. And at the same time, you can look right just a tiny bit. You're not going to be able to go too far with grabbing onto it and with the ball where it is. But just kind of go up and down that muscle. Grab it from the top and work your way down towards the collarbone. Grab onto it, pull it backwards, and look to the right. Oh, yeah. I do this one when I get stuck in trains in Fort Collins, which happens on a regular basis, as you locals know. You sit in your car and grab that SEM and stretch out the neck tension. Pull back, look the opposite way, and then come back. Okay? So coming down, I'm making my way down. I'm down here near my collarbone at the front of my throat here. I'm grabbing, pulling back looking the opposite way. Okay, so that will be really helpful with um, neck tension, with throat constriction, if you like get, if you're, when you're stressed out and your throat tenses up. Wonderful way to alleviate that swallowing issue. Okay, so let's make our way down the back. So we're going to come down and get into the trap. So we're going to be right about here. So feel where your shoulder blade is. You can feel the top of the shoulder blade. You can feel the spine. Find the top of your shoulder blade, and then go in a couple inches to you. You can feel the upper corner of that shoulder blade, and then go up a little bit from there. So the upper inside corner of the shoulder blade, of your left shoulder blade, right above that. And then we're going to lie back down. And sit right on top of it with our body weight. Okay, so it's underneath me. So we're getting into that upper trap area. You'll feel it. It'll there be a knot in there, and we'll be a really tight feeling. Okay, so we're going to settle in to a little pressure here. Bend your elbow. Take your right hand to your left wrist. So while we're working this area, I want you to really try to relax the left arm and try to open up around that shoulder blade by just letting go of tension there and let this right hand move the left arm for you okay 
So we're going to lift the elbow off the ground and we're bringing that arm overhead and you'll feel that ball squeeze into the trap and pulling that left arm to straight. Squeeze. Now we're going to crescent over. So think about bringing both hands over to the right, curving a little through your upper body. So we're just tilting that shoulder girdle, pulling that left arm over the head, squeezing into that tight trap. Take a couple deep breaths here. It might feel really amazing, but it might be super intense at the same time. So we want to breathe into it. Remember our yogic breathing. Breathe from your belly. Keep it slow and deep. That helps the body stay relaxed and tuned in. Now let's bend the left elbow. Remember that right arm's doing the work. And we're going to bring that arm overhead. Good. So we're coming out of this contraction. And we're bringing that arm back to the left. And we're going to circle back up around. So this is the movement we're doing throughout the whole video, working this shoulder. So we're going to pull, hold it for a moment there, push into the muscle, breathe. Good. Hanging out for as long as you need to. Once you get the idea of what we're doing here, you might want to spend some time just working out those knots. Okay. So we're going to come back around. I'm going to take the ball in my hand and I'm going to lower it down. So I'm going from right here to about right there. So find, you know, the scapula is shaped like a triangle. You saw in that picture. So we're finding the upper inside corner of that shoulder blade. We're not on the bone. We're right on the inside of that shoulder blade. Right on the corner. And then we're going to roll back. Okay. Kind of get yourself, wiggle around a little bit so you get right on that spot. Find the corner of the bone and get right in front of it. Okay, Bend the left elbow. Right arm does the work. I want you to keep that left arm relaxed. Lift the elbow and we're coming up and overhead. Taking our time. This is intense work. Not everybody likes deep work, but I feel in my practice that sometimes it's necessary to tell those muscles who's in charge and not to be tense and angry all the time. We're going to go in there and we're going to loosen you up and get some relief. Okay, So we're coming around. Okay. Bringing it across. Now we're going to add on a little movement. So as we pull the arm to the right, you're going to feel how the shoulder blade kind of wings out a little bit. Try to keep the ball in the same spot and almost as if when that shoulder blade pulls off your back, think about trying to tuck that ball into the little gap underneath that shoulder blade as it pulls off of your back. Okay, and think about gliding the ball as we move down, keeping the ball right in that spot. So we're coming up and overhead, and we're making our way back around. Good. Pull across the chest, keep the left arm nice and relaxed. Find that little gap where that shoulder blade wings out a bit and pulls off your back. It'll give you a little bit more room in there. And then we're circling back around. Okay, So let's move on. I'm moving from right here. I'm just moving down. Remember, we're going to the inside edge of the shoulder blade. I'm about there. And I'm coming back. So this is going to be, we're working in towards mid traps here. And also we're getting into the rhomboids, which help the shoulder blades pull together and they're weak on just about everybody because that's human nature in our anatomy. So you might feel some bumps in there, you might feel you have a ball kind of popping um, over the top of some tight stuff in there. 
See if you can angle the ball right on top of it, and if not, right next to it where you're at least applying some pressure into that knot. Bend the elbow, right hand takes the wrist, left arm's totally relaxed. We're coming up and overhead. Let that arm drop back nice and heavy over your head here. Try to release behind that shoulder blade, behind the arm, the ball and socket there, and just let that ball do its magic. Okay, so now we're going to come up overhead. You'll feel muscles moving and popping and crunching and shifting underneath there. We're pulling across. This one's going to be even more fun than the last one. So we're feeling that shoulder blade wing out, and we're trying to get that ball right up and in there. Stretch and pull. And then we're bending the elbow and we're coming back over the head. Good. We're circling around. Woo! Hanging out here for a second if you want. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. This is deeper than the foam roller videos I do, so if you do the foam rollers and you like, you want a little bit more, try the tennis ball. Get in there, find the knot, reach across, and we circle back around. Good. So I'm rolling over. So, I'm going from about the middle down a little ways further so I can kind of feel where the bottom corner of my shoulder blade is and I'm getting right to the inside of that and then I'm rolling back we'll find the bone we don't want to be on the bone get right into the inside edge of that corner of the blade okay Bend the elbow, right hand, relaxed left arm, up and over. Take a moment right here. Whew. Deep breaths. Don't forget the breathing part. It's pretty important. Okay. Relaxed left arm. We take it over the chest and we reach. Back around. Good. Awesome job. And let's one more time. Reach across. And back. Nice. Moving on. We're going to get into the back along the erectors now. So, we're going from where we were right here, and we're going to come down to this spot right here. Okay, so there's a tight spot right through here in your cute, this is called your quadratus lumborum. It's beneath a bunch of tendon on top that holds that lower back and supports all the weight from your upper body. So think about the top of your hip bone and the bottom of your spine and where it comes in together in that angle right there, right in that corner. So we're going to work the ball right in that area, okay, right there. You can see where I'm at, right there. And I'm rolling back on over the top of it. So you'll feel it in there. It's pretty loud. Once you get some pressure in there, it will let you know that you're in the right spot. Okay? So we have feet on the floor and bent knees with this one. Okay. So depending on your level of pressure that you like in the lower back, there's a couple different things you can do. You can keep your butt on the floor and just let your low, low back lift a little higher or if you want to get in there with a little bit more pressure lift your butt off the floor and ground your feet 
So you're floating and your butt's not on the ground and then you have direct downward pressure on top of it. Okay. Either way, this one is more effective because you get more pressure. So let's elevate the hip. So we're not going this way with elevation, we're going this way. So like shrugging of the shoulder, here's the shrug of the shoulder, I do this, right? Like questioning something, I just elevate it upward towards my ear and that contracts the trap, right? So to contract the QL, we need to do the same thing with the hip. So I want you to imagine tilting your pelvis in such a way where you're contracting into this spot. So think about what you need to do to contract your obliques, which are down in the sides here. You're going to have to elevate the side. So watch as I do it. I'm going to tilt and then I'm pulling away to stretch it all out and then I'm taking a second. So if you want this leg to go straight, you certainly can. It might show it better with the elevation. So I'm going to elevate this hips, lift, pull, and reset. Take a breath. That reset is when the magic happens. Okay, so that's how you release your QL. Elevation, length, so you're contracting, then you're stretching it out, and then you're relaxing. So taking the ball in various places here, you can go up a little bit more up the back, and you can get some erectors, which are those tight, thicker, protruding muscles on either side of your spine, more superficial ones. You can get into those too with the same movement. So I'm up a little bit higher now, and I'm elevating. So I'm squeezing, sucking up and squeezing into the side, and then I'm reaching, and then I'm relaxing. Let's take your butt to the floor, take a breath or two, give the muscles in that spot time to relax and reset, and then try it again. Lift the butt up, elevate, squeeze, reach, and relax. And this is the kind of manual therapy, one of the examples that I do in my neuromuscular therapy work. I get an elbow in there for you, I apply as much pressure as you want, and then we work the same movement where you elevate, contracting, reaching, and resetting. And it lets go of your lower back like that. It's like magic. Okay, so work in that mid-back a little bit as I'm going, I'm just going to go up one more time because I want to. So I'm right below the ribs here, okay? Just planting it right along the spine, not on the bone. And I'm elevating. So I'm squeezing, I'm reaching, and I'm relaxing. Staying right on that same spot. I'm doing it again. Elevation, squeeze, pull it together, stretch it out, and relax. Good. So I would recommend doing that QL work. You can take it all the way up to the bottom of your rib cage, but don't do it on your ribs because it's not going to work. Okay, so that one is for the lower back. Okay, so check out my other videos that I've done on upper body uh, with the ball, front and back, and also my foam roller classes. Check those out. They're really awesome. Foam rollers are my best friend. Uh, along with the tennis ball. So check out those other videos. I also have yoga with weights and regular yoga classes that are on the YouTube channel uh, that I have. So check any of those out. Thank you so much for taking the time to take care of you and spend the time with me. I hope this really helps you a lot. Uh, you can certainly send me some feedback. Uh, if you're local, I am a practicing therapeutic massage professional specializing in neuromuscular. I have a lot more magical moves to release your body. Uh, I do energy healing, so that is deeply, deeply relaxing. It lets go of emotional connection to chronic pain and uh, takes you deep, deep, deep into a place of, of inner peace and release so you can allow your body to actually let go of things. So. 
take the time to check out my website uh, at www.omshantihealing.com. Uh, and if you're local, you can check out my phone number, send me an uh, email, get a hold of me somehow, and make an appointment and come see me. So have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. Take care. Namaste. And thank you for watching.